Ladies and gentlemen, I, um, I'm really very grateful indeed to the Science Museum for this uh, special opportunity to visit and to open the new uh, Atmosphere Gallery, which, if I may say so, is, is, a, is a very timely addition uh, to this remarkable place of learning, which I'm sure I remember coming to as a child a very long time ago. And it is a real pleasure for me to be here because um, along with uh, the many other museums in this part of London, uh, this institution was established out of the profits from the Great Exhibition of 1851, which was created by my great-great-great-grandfather, ably supported, I might add, by my great-great-great-grandmother. <laughs> and uh, I have rather long, well, for quite a long time, admired Prince Albert. I mean, you think that he, only, he died age 42. I remember getting to the age of 42 and thinking, help. <laughs> but uh, he achieved an astonishing amount in that short period of time. And he was very much ahead of his time, uh, perhaps not all that appreciated at the time, and saw the value in, in creating institutions that could educate people by entertaining and inspiring them on a grand scale. And uh, your new gallery, if I may say so, certainly lives up to that ideal. Alas, however, as you know only too well, climate science has taken a battering of late. Uh, and it's why I specifically paid a visit to the School of Environmental Sciences at the University of East Anglia earlier this year. It is home to uh, the Climatic Research Unit, and I've been its patron for nearly 20 years now. Well, on my visit, I was, um, I was given a briefing on the latest hard facts of science, and it is all thoroughly depressing. We now have a pretty clear picture of what is happening as a result of human activity, and that uh, allows us to build reliable models that chart the risks we take with our children and grandchildren's future if we carry on with business as usual. Uh, emissions of greenhouse gases will continue to rise. They are doing so now, and so we must all decide what we do about it. Uh, and that leads me to the point that I would just like to make this morning. Uh, science, as, as, as you know far better than I, uh, derives ultimately from the Greek word for knowledge. And here I just want to emphasize that when, for instance, I try to advocate a more sustainable form of agriculture, I do, not do, I do so not from a position of complete ignorance. Uh, I did spend a bit of time at Cambridge, after all. <laughs> but, uh, but, from, but from a view, ladies and gentlemen, informed by extensive science, uh, which, to my mind, vindicates the wisdom of age-old traditional techniques, those that concentrate on what the soil needs to make the land productive in the long term. So, far from being anti-science, I am very much pro the application of learning that enables us to balance uh, productivity with the long-term health of nature's ecosystems. The great irony, of course, of all this anti-science stuff, is that uh, here I am endlessly supporting the science of climate change, but it is being vigorously and ruthlessly opposed by all those whom you would have thought, you would have thought, were vigorously pro-science in every shape and form. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, 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 I'm here because I wish to defend the scientific process, but this support must not blind us to the need for informed debate Science can explain, it can offer signposts, but it cannot make decisions. That is a job for society. Albert Einstein is supposed to have had a sign above his desk that read, not everything that counts can be counted, and not everything that can be counted counts. I do hope he did, because for me that says it all. But perhaps not quite, as it only remains for me uh, to declare this new climate science gallery open.